So I know it's taken me a while to get to this review as well. That's because, well, I was busy and there was a big hype train on this film for a while and in case of any criticisms I have, I didn't want to get torn apart. But all I can say to this film is Wakanda forever. Black Panther is the latest Marvel film, the last one to come out before Avengers Infinity War, and I don't think anybody expected it to be as successful as it was. I remember watching the trailer thinking like, yeah, it'll be cool, Black Panther's a great character um, who has a really important like, significant history in the comics, uh, being the first ever African uh, superhero, first ever black superhero. However, I just thought the film looked kind of generic from the trailers, I thought the CGI was kind of bad, and I just wasn't that excited for it, but the music I'm sure was going to be great. Well, I'm so glad that I was wrong. Black Panther was a fantastic superhero film, fantastic film just in its own right. Um, the casting was phenomenal. I'm so glad uh, that Hollywood and Marvel Studios uh, and Kevin Feige decided to go with the culture in this film and to not hold back from that. Um, by not whitewashing the cast, um, they actually chose legitimate actors, legitimate African actors, and um, it was just it was just awesome to see this culture that hasn't been explored in such a rich and vibrant way before uh, on screen. It was colorful, it was beautiful, and the, the sound, uh, the cultural music that I was hearing just had me excited that it was something fresh and different. Also, Kendrick's soundtrack, what there was in the movie, was straight up just... However, there wasn't enough of it. There was the cultural music that I was feeling like, oh, this is so cool. It reminds me, I know it's a generic comparison, but The Lion King, oh, so good. And the Kendrick's uh, music during some of the action scenes, I'm like, oh. And then there's just generic superhero music in parts. They should have used more of Kendrick's album. It should have been a mix between the two and not with this generic stuff in between. I was kind of disappointed in that. Chadwick Boseman is great as Black Panther. I thought he was awesome in Civil War. He does an even better job here. It's got to be hard to pull off those accents. I can't remember her name at the moment. Denai Guerrero, maybe? From The Walking Dead, Michonne? She was phenomenal. Holy cow, does she kick butt or what? Man, I thought all the female leads in this movie, they were all fantastic. There was great character development of Black Panther, of his father, of the motivations behind the story, why Wakanda does what it does because of isolationism, because, because of colonialism. It asks big questions. Which most Marvel movies don't do, they're not consequences. There's not really much else other than like, oh yeah, that was a fun superhero fight. There's a few others that have done that, but Black Panther really hit that home. And that's through the wonderful writing and uh, performance of Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. Now, I don't know if I would go as far to say that he's the best villain Marvel's ever had, but he's definitely one of the best ones in the past few years and one of the best of the MCU, for sure. My only problem with him, I'll get it out of the gate, is that there's not enough of them. He shows up and you're like, oh, okay, this guy, he's gonna be legit. Then he disappears for an hour. And then he comes back and you're like, oh, that's right. Andy Serkis isn't the villain in this movie. Andy Serkis was great, by the way. He chewed up a ton of scenery. But Michael B. Jordan's motivations as a character, I don't want to spoil it, are definitely laid out. And as someone who often thinks about these uh, social issues and moral issues, it had me leaving like, huh. Not to mention the fact that Killmonger's suit is actually inspired by Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, one of my favorites, Michael B. Jordan, you're awesome, we could be bros, just saying. And it also hints at something that has always stood out well for me in superhero uh, lore, and particularly Spider-Man, that's with great power comes great responsibility. If you have a technologically advanced society and you have the capability to help the world, do you have a moral obligation to do so? And I think that's fascinating. There are some great action scenes in this film too, uh, but I actually feel like those are one of the weaker parts of the film, uh, with the exception of a couple fights. And that's because of the use of shaky cam in uh, a lot of, especially the early opening fight scene, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, it's hard to tell. And there's, there's, I know there's wonderful choreography going on, but you can't see it because of the way it was filmed. I'm one of the ones who, if you have a martial artist like Black Panther, who's one of the best in the entire universe of Marvel, keep the camera wide, show off the choreography. Um, it just, it speaks more volumes to the actor's physicality and to the performances, you can just see a little bit more and it's not so choppily edited. Also, this is probably the weakest part of the film, is it's, the CGI is just kind of shoddy. It's not that good. It looks like 
CGI from like a video game on the early PS3 days of 2006, 2007, particularly the end fight. And I was just looking at it, I was like, man, they could have done so much better. I don't know if they rushed it, if it was production budget issues, but that was definitely the weakest part of the film. And there were the parts where it actually took me out of the movie a little bit. And I was like, man, but it doesn't take away from the overall film. The other biggest flaw I think this film has is the pacing. Apparently Ryan Coogler, who was 31 years old, has done this incredible resume, including Black Panther. Ryan Coogler said that his original cut was four hours long. I would love to see that cut. I think it would be amazing to watch. A lot more things would be fleshed out. Maybe we'd get more Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. However, a four hour cut, you almost can have three different films within that. And Black Panther, I think, suffers from that. There's a bunch of different narratives and subplots going on that some of them could have used a little bit more development. Some of them are just a bunch of plots kind of thrown together. It's like three different movies in one. And now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think if the film had been longer, if they had given him a chance to actually make this a three hour uh, epic film, and we would have understood why he had so many of these subplots going on, but you've got three different movies in there. And it's like, what? And because of that, there are parts where the movie just is up and down in its pacing. It starts off great, real high note, and then it just drags for about 30 minutes. And you're like, what is going on? And then, my, then Killmonger comes back and it kind of fixes all that. In the end, this Marvel movie, Black Panther, had an important message to say. I cannot personally relate to um, young and old black America in the way of understanding this film in the cultural value that it has. However, I see that and I can recognize that as an individual, even though I may not be able to personally relate to it. Being able to see one of my best friends who happens to be African-American get so excited at the idea of what this film presents for the black community and uh, for the African world at large and the culture and the history. And it, it gets me really excited. It excites me that this film has made well over a billion dollars, that Black Panther could be one of the faces of the MCU going forward, because there's so much rich history to explore with the character. I'm excited to see what happens going forward. Kudos, Ryan Coogler and your team. I give Black Panther an eight out of 10. I know I already did the explosion thing earlier, but I'll be a little more stylish this time. Wakanda forever. <laughs>